So we are starting the second week of the program. It's a focus week. Uh, there will be a series of lectures this week. So before we start with Vasily, there is one important announcement that tomorrow we will have a welcome drink in Galilea House. So right after the lecture, uh, we will meet right I mean, here. Yeah, and yeah. then all of us will move there. Then we will see the house and then we will drink something. But it is the actual Galilea House. And uh, so now it's a pleasure to have Vasily Gaston who will tell us something about localization, right? Okay, uh, there is it's Italian raise high quality it's in this Uh, so, yeah, so I was asked uh, to give uh, some introductory lectures about uh, what is known as supersymmetric localization in physics, and in mathematics is known as the equivariant homology. Well, in, in physics, there's also covariant homology or applied to infinite dimensional geometries, like to the spaces of the path integrals or which we integrate. But uh, as we want to get um, intuition about uh, this, uh, uh, this subject, and uh, as uh, uh, I want to give some elementary introduction, we'll actually start from some simple uh, definitions and uh, from uh, uh, very simple finite dim dimensional geometry and the definitions of the equivalent homology and some uh, localization theories in mathematics like Matthias um, about the localization formula and so on, and then we'll gradually develop to the path integral and the quantum field theories. Uh, okay. And uh, so the beginning probably would be elementary if it's not if if, if, if something not clear. Uh, you are always welcome to ask uh, questions. I want to the first points to be where uh, So okay, so let me start from uh, the concepts of uh, equivalent homology of the manifolds. So. That was developed um, in words by Cartan and other mathematicians one half century ago. So the situation is the following. Suppose that uh, you have some manifold M. So I'm being manifold. And suppose that, that we have a group G which acts on M. And you assume that G is a compact liquid. Okay. 
Now, so what if we were a cohomology? So what G if we were a cohomology on M is trying to compute is essentially a cohomology of the space of the quotient space. So we're interested in the cohomology of the quotient space M factor G. So the situation would be simple if G acts freely if G acts freely on M so that there are no fixed points then we can uh, then this quotient is a good space, is a good smooth manifold and then we just uh, define the equivalent homology I will denote them with the uh, sub uh, index G equivalent homology of G on M would be equal to the ordinary cohomology of M portion G. But what we shall do if uh, the action is not free? If there are some uh, fixed points, then this quotient is not well defined. For example, if you take uh, just R2, and let's say that U1 acts on R2 in the usual way by rotation, then the quotient R2 mod S1, just like, you know, just like array. But the pre image of this point is point, and the pre image of a lot of points is circle. So something, something is different with this point and the array ends here. So if you would uh, try to compute one more in the ordinary way, you would miss some information. So, a covariant homology tries to uh, capture all, all the relevant uh, physics or geometry of those orbits which are not ordinary orbits by doing computations right in the space M rather than the quotient space. Algebra of G, valued 
in differential force mechanics. You can say the other way around. Differential force on M will get in uh, the functions on uh, <coughs> the Lyell diversion. Uh, if these functions are polynomial functions, then one can formally take that. Uh, one can formally say that the complex that we consider is the space of differential force on M, and the all symmetrical powers of the dual of the Lyell diversion. Since uh, this space is uh, uh, <coughs> generates, well, the elements of the space are coordinates in the Lyell algebra, and if you take the symmetrical powers to those coordinates, it's like we consider polynomials of the Lyell algebra. So let me, let's say that uh, in the basis T8, so that the basis of G, let's say that epsilon A would be coordinates. That will be coordinates on G in this basis. So an element, so if you take some element, that's called that's called H. An element H in the algebra can be expanded over the basis in the coordinates. So Better to put the index downstairs to the basis and upstairs to the coordinates, so it's the steps from A to A. So the complex in this the, the complex for the Cartan model of query cohomologies in this uh, uh, in, in these notations are just differential forms in the manifold M, which are also functions of epsilon. <laughs> Now we shall modify the differential and the differential D, the equivalent differential, is the usual Cartan differential, is the usual Dirac differential, minus the following operation. We take, uh, we take the sum of our all vector fields generated by the basic uh, elements in the algebra, and let's call we call them. IDK. The contraction with the vector field in the differential form reduces the degree of the form by one. And then I we'll multiply that by the element epsilon A to the dual of the algebra. <coughs> so this differential <coughs> is called <coughs> Cartan differential or differential of the Cartan. Now, to define cohomology, we would need to have a complex, and also we would need to have a good uh, gradient, and we would need to have that uh, d squares to zero. So first of all, to have a good notion of gradient, let's assign let's assign to epsilon a degree two. Then we see what happens. The, sorry. Yes. I'm sorry, I don't understand how it works with similar terms of your DG. How it works? Yes, yeah, yeah, so how it works with respect to this differential complex. Right. Okay. Right. So how it works? Okay. okay. Yeah. So so D is the Dirac differential, and it just takes external derivative on this vector. Okay. Now, epsilon a is just multiplication by one of the coordinates on the Lie algebra epsilon a uh, times the value of this operation. So what is this operation? This operation IVA, this is IVA is contraction with vector field contraction with the vector field VA, where VA is the vector field generated by the basis element TA. So it acts on the Lorentz phase. Yes, it depends on this factor. 
So it decreases. The it decreases, right? It decreases the degree of the differential form by one. So your differential Gaussian does not it increase and decrease. Right. It, it, uh, this it's the, not the Durand uh, differential. Right? So this part uh, increases the degree of the okay. differential form by one, and this part decreases the degree of the differential form by one. Okay. But what we are trying, right, in the second to do is to assign a proper grading to all components in this formula to have a good notion of degree on the space. And for that, what I want to, uh, what I want to uh, define is to assign to epsilon, to this element, the degree 2. Okay. And you see what happens if you assign to epsilon the degree 2 and we will uh, then compute the grading uh, using this uh, notion of degree, then when uh, this operation decreases the degree of the differential form by 1, but it also multiplies it by epsilon, and so as a result, this operation increases the gradient in these notions by 1. Okay, so we are assigned to epsilon the degree 2, uh, and then we can see that d has degree 1. The contraction in the vector field is degree minus 1. And then it's so consistent that the degree of the Cartan differential is 1. Okay? And, sorry, there is X only on the wrong space. So, no, uh, the dual algebra is not concerned with uh, this operation. So this operation acts on the Durand space, yes. yes, but then it also is multiplied by epsilon a, and then epsilon a just adds the factor. Okay. Okay. Other questions?
the, sorry, the, the action on the Liadra is trivial or? Uh, sorry, the action of the algebra is trivial of what? Well, you since you define the G invariant uh, part of the complex, the action of G on the Lie algebra, is it trivial? Or uh, well, or it, it's, it's trivial if the algebra is a if it's not, oh. if it's general the algebra, that's by a joint representation. Sure. It, 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 it acts naturally by the joint. So, at LBA, it's like it's on the what is the LDA? No, LDA doesn't act on the algebra part. So LDA is the linear derivative along the vector field B. And just by the definition, uh, the linear derivative is D by B plus I B the usual definition of the differential geometry. It's not clear that d squared to zero is in balance with it. It's not clear that it's uh, squared to zero on the invariant part. Because g also acts on c of g. Well, the, the, okay, no, that's the, just what that means. That the, you, you, you define the invariant uh, forms here as uh, those forms which are healed by, by this operation. So then should we just take the trivial action on the algebra, not the other one? Well, 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 So in case if G is an abelian 
uh, group, let, let, let's say, for example, let's say that the would be just U1, and let's say that epsilon is a coordinate on the center of the algebra of U1, since uh, U1 makes, uh, since U1 commutes with itself, all uh, joint invariant functions on this leaf algebra of U1, which is just R, would be any functions in R. So in this case, the cohomology, the covariant U1 cohomology of the point is just the space of all functions of R. The coordinate on the star is denoted by S. Well, the usual definitions one requires this to be polynomial, but as uh, we want to be more generic, at this point we will allow um, all kinds of things. Now, now, let's come to the integration and the uh, localization. There were some generalities at first. So I usually jump to think about integration. So you say, suppose that you have two manifolds, X and Y are compact manifolds. So if you, if, you, if you have your manifold represented 
uh, by uh, some cellular or singular complex, then you can define the push forward operation which takes uh, some chain from one manifold from the, from the source and computes its image in the target. Yes. So then the push forward operation acts on the homologies in this case, naturally. It acts on the, on the arguments, actually. I mean, the push forward acts on vector fields from the manifold X to Y, and that's why we can induce uh, a push forward on the cohomological space, cohomology class. Is that it? You, you can induce push forward uh, in, this, um, in this argument on the, the cohomologies in the case when you have one regularity between homology and cohomology. Okay. Because naturally, as you said, it adds some vectors and also it's, uh, it adds some chains, it adds like on the structures in the manifold, not on the dual structures. It adds not Normal push forward acts not on the differential course, but on not on the dual structures, but on the structures of manifolds itself, like vectors or chains there. So it naturally gives you an operation on the homologies, which sends homology of the manifold X to the target Y. But when we, when we have one graduality between homology and cohomology, we can use that and define then the push forward operation of the cohomology. So, uh, let me give you some examples of this push-forward operation, the natural examples. Examples of push-forward. From X to Y. So uh, what can we do? For example, we can take, uh, for example, we can take the map F to be just trivial map from manifold X to the manifold Y, which is taken to be point. So in this case, the push-forward operation is just integration. <coughs> so if you have uh, some homology plus alpha, you integrate it over the space x, and that's the image. The cohomology, it's just integration of the space that gives you an upper and that's another uh, map of the homology of the point, which is zero. Okay, so well, that last trivial example is again integration, but now let's take a family. So let's take a vector bundle. E over S. So now, in this case, X would be the base. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. It's better to, to to use notations. Okay, let's just take X to Y. So vector bundle X to Y, but X is the total space, and Y is the base. And this is projection map. Sorry, F is projection map. Which projects fibers of the vector bundle to the points on the base. Okay. So, again, you can define the push forward operation on the cohomologies of the total space of the vector bundle to the cohomologies on the base. You might ask, oh, well, when we try to define them, we use the argument that uh, x and y are compact manifolds, but in this case, as x is the total space of the vector bundle, it's not compact. So what shall we do? We shall uh, refine our definitions a little bit, and instead of considering just the alternative cohomology in the space x, we can consider co what is called cohomology is compact support. So on, on, on space x, 
which are considered cohomology is complex support, which means that in the vertical directions, so this is the base y, and this some the, the vertical fiber of the vertical bundle of x, and we request in the definition of the cohomology is complex support that well the support would be defined in this vertical direction that uh, the differential force which I used to define that in the general definition just identical range at some point when you go to infinity and, and then again there is a point variability and one can define push forward so in this case in, when there is such projection like from the vector bundle to its base then you have the push forward operation from the cohomologies of complex support on the total space of the vector bundle to the cohomologies on the base and concretely you can construct this operation by just integrating a given differential for representing such cohomology class over the fiber over the vertical fiber and then gives you just some form defined on the base and one can then check with uh, the Durand differential and show it uh, then one can check that this induces the uh, map on the cohomology. Okay. So, moreover, moreover, one can check that uh, in this situation, this uh, map actually induces isomorphism, and it's called Tom isomorphism. 